Guy Martin and David Coulthard have been racing a superbike against a Formula One car. The car won the braking test. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? The bike was quicker through a slalom. Nine and a half seconds. Ah, oh, smoked you. And the car won the drag race by a nose. Now it's time for the final challenge. A race around Silverstone, the same course used for the Formula One British Grand Prix. The superbike lap record here is two minutes and three seconds, but an F1 car is 30 seconds quicker. So, right, so go on, the plan is. The car is much quicker, we know that. Yeah, we it's know. just, it's got nothing to do with your riding talent or my lack of driving talent. It's just quicker. The car is it's just quicker. even sitting in the stands there, it's quicker. Look at it. Look at it. It's just angry. And so, to make things competitive, this will need to be a special sort of race. David in the Formula One car will have to complete four laps before Guy on his superbike can complete three. Right, are you beating me? I don't want to because I really like you. And I only met you yesterday, but putting that man crush to one side, you know, I've got to do my bit for four wheels. I'll give it me all, that's why, you know, we're in this racing situation. Yeah. I always give it me all, 100%. The racers prepare. You don't see me psyching myself up. What do you want me to do? Beat me chest. I don't get revved up, do I, Matt? No, not at all. Nice and calm. This is something a bit different, a little bit special. I'm racing a Formula One car. You still want to run with some traction? Yeah, please, sir. David Coulthard in a Formula One car. I know what you're thinking, like the bike racers. Ooh, steely look and... <sighs> I like that. It seemed like a good idea when we were talking about it. Now I'm in the car, I'm not so sure. It's going to be difficult. Guy and David do a slow outlap to form up on the grid. David deliberately spins his rear tires to make them hotter and stickier so he has more grip off the line. The race will start when the lights go out. I lost quite a bit of time to guy off the start, which I'll be honest, it pissed me off a little bit. I've got him, I've got him. I've got him in the turn one. I beat David Coulthard in the turn one. And then he just smoked me. Came around the outside of me in the first corner. Just looks so steady, that car. Yet going at walk speed. The race is on. David may be ahead, but to take victory, he has to try and complete an extra 3.6 mile lap and pass Guy again. Helping David is downforce. The air rushing over the wings on his car pushes it into the ground, giving him more grip. Even with cold tires, he barely lifts the throttle as he turns into the famous cop's corner at 120 miles per hour. At the same corner, Guy is more than 40 miles per hour slower. Even though he's pushing so hard, the bike tries to spit him off. You've got one of the best sequences of high-speed corners anywhere in the world, and that's Beckett's. It's the three corners that take you out onto the back straight. You look at the corner and you're going seriously quickly, and you just trust the downforce, and it's incredible what it delivers, and it's a great reminder just how incredible these cars are. After the first lap, David has just a 21-second lead over Guy. If the gap only increases by that much each lap, David won't catch the bike, and Guy will win. But David's second lap is a fast one and takes another 35 seconds out of Guy's advantage. 
He's on the limit, pulling nearly 4G in turn one. As Guy starts his third and final lap, it's still too close to call. David is half a lap behind. I was starting to lose hope. I couldn't see him. David starts his last lap. The car's average lap speed is 30 miles per hour more than the bike's, so the gap is reducing rapidly. And then he appeared as we came into the, uh, the farm section. The thing that's very impressive when you follow a bike on track is how much influence the rider has on the performance of the bike. His body is used to manipulate the bike, and you can see when he's in a long corner, he's moving his body to get some feedback from the tires. It's a lot more involved than, than driving. I'm impressed how close that bike is to the car. And like David said, when we were in the race, he had an eye on me going onto the straight, and he said he couldn't catch me. On the straights, the bike hits 175, just 10 miles per hour slower than the car. But it's under braking where David makes up all the ground. He's able to brake later and in a shorter distance. Now it's all about whether Guy can fend off a Formula One car. I eyed him up. I knew my opportunity would be around the outside. Normally a difficult thing to do in car-on-car uh, -car combat because you'd be out on the dirty track, but with the benefit of four wheels and tires, a load of downforce, I was able to just sneak around the outside. And if I could have got my arms out of the cockpit, I would have given him a little royal wave. He doesn't look to be a wrestling match. He just effortlessly glides away. With just over half a lap left, it's now a straight race for the line. And David Coulthard takes the chequered flag, completing his four laps 13 seconds quicker than Guy completed three. My hands are really sore, even with power steering. All right, mate. <laughs> that is fast, boy. That is fast. It was a good race. A lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Absolutely awesome, that was, yeah. There's only two of us here, and, and, and these guys have, have got a, a, a full team. But we've done the best we could with what we've got, so... I thought Guy did a fantastic job. I mean, the track's really cold. He's not going to have a lot of grip. Sort of way you're squirting out of some of these corners looked to frighten the hell out of me. It's opened my eyes to the motorbikes because I don't know much about them, but it was really good. The bike there, it's off the line, it's so quick. I thought it'd be a bit further apart, but he, uh, yeah, he looked good on the bike. That's a bit tired. <laughs> well done. I thought I wasn't going to catch you. <laughs> I think he's done well to, to come back from the crash that he's had to throw his leg over a bike and, and do what we've done over the last couple of days. It's, it's, it's been good, it's positive. I'm happy though, I'm happy. I couldn't have done any more. Love the on-track, loved it. Loved it, getting to go out on my bike again that I've not rode for six months. I love riding my bike, but no, I got more out of talking to the lads in the garage. It's interesting, that. it's a way of life. Being a Formula One mechanic is a way of life. Like, if I was 10 years younger, I would have jumped. It's always a pleasure to be at a racetrack. The on-track, I know, is fantastic. It's always fun to drive a Grand Prix car. It's a real privilege driving one of those World Championship winning cars. But off-track has been the most enjoyable because it's been a new experience. To come along, meet Guy, understand a little bit of what makes him tick, to find out we've actually got some interests in common. I'm clearly not as technically passionate and absolutely not as interested in getting my hands dirty as he is. What are you putting these wheels on? But Somehow, I think there's a common thread. Over the course of this competition, the car has come out victorious, so well done to the car. Going on very happy, very happy, loved it. It's been an honour. At Silverstone Racing Circuit in Northamptonshire, it's the first day of the British Grand Prix weekend. 
and Guy Martin is just 30 minutes away from his first ever Formula One race against former world champion Jensen Button. As the cars get their final prep, another British F1 legend pops by. So you've been getting your hands dirty with this then? Or? We've been doing a bit, mate. Yeah, David Coulthard, he came to have a look. A yeah, few words of wisdom. Go faster, try harder. They were don't, uh, don't crash. Yeah. Don't crash, yeah. Phew, he's a good bloke, he is, isn't he? Good bloke. Good luck, boys. Um, Cheers, boss. What's that? May, may the Savory. Madness win. They make light. For the race, Guy and Jensen will both be driving classic Williams Formula One cars. Guy will be in an FW08C, the first F1 car Ayrton Senna ever drove, while Jensen will be in FW08B a unique prototype six-wheel ground effect car which was banned before it ever got to race. This will be the first time Jensen's ever driven it. After the photo shoot, they head for the pit lane, accompanied by Guy's F1 mentor, Karun Chandok. Yeah, we've just seen videos of his onboards and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. like, you're ready for him now. How late I, you was breaking down the back straight. Yeah, but then Jensen's going into the unknown probably yeah. more than what I am. Have you ever drove a six-wheel truck? <laughs> Have you ever drove anything with six wheels? I used to drive my old man's tranny. Ah, oh, double like twin wheel. Yeah. Twin wheel. Heavy weighting, over three ton rating that. That's what that means, double wheels. Oh, does it? After a rolling start, the race will be over five laps, but Jensen will have to make a pit stop on his second lap. Then it'll be a straight fight to the chequered flag. So, yeah, just pull him around. Um, get a feel of the line and stuff, right? He covers uh, it well, but he could tell he was nervous. You can start to see when he's nervous, he goes quiet. Ready? I've been nervous all day. Nothing that was said or was done made me any less nervous. Both drivers will get two warm-up laps for Guy to get a feel for the track and for Jensen to get a feel for his very different new car. I've always said to myself that I shouldn't do silly things that I can help myself doing. But as soon as you get in the car and your visor goes down, everything goes out the window and you drive it as quick as you can. We went out for the first two so you just show me the line. And in the second lap, he pressed on a bit because he wanted to feel what the car was like when he pressed on. The six-wheeler definitely felt different. You're sat right at the front, and the rear wheels are so far away from you, you don't know when it's going to bite. Your feet are dangling over the front wheels. If you hit a wall, you're going to break your legs. During warm-up, the team noticed blue smoke coming from Jensen's car. That's, that's rubbing it up a bit. That's rubbing quite a bit. That was the skirt material. It's running a tad low. You can see the smoke, but that was only happening at the end of the straight when the car got more ground effect, getting drawn harder to the floor, and that's when the skirts were coming in contact with the ground. It's decided the smoke is not a worry, and that means everyone's finally ready to race. As they approach the line, Guy and Jensen form up for a rolling start. It was great looking across and seeing his eyes and seeing him nervous about driving something that is just so normal to me. When the lights go out, the race begins. The lights went off and he lit it up pretty quickly. I just thought that Jensen do whatever he was going to do, then right, I'll just try and stick with him. Follow me through the high speed, right, left. And then he was away. Yeah, that was about the first and last that I saw of him. Jensen now pushes to build up as big a lead as he can before his pit stop. And Guy needs to do all he can to keep that gap small. Had a couple of moments early on. As I got into a high G turn, I felt the car move. I didn't have enough confidence to push on beyond it. I 
I wasn't going to try and keep with Jensen if I didn't feel comfortable. And I definitely didn't feel comfortable at the pace he was going. As Jensen comes in for his pit stop, he's already opened up a 10 second gap over Guy. But as Jensen sits in the pit lane, Guy rockets past and takes the lead. Jensen rejoins the track, now 10 seconds behind Guy. Then we did the little pit stop for me, came out, and then I started catching him. At certain corners, I watched him through, and I was like, hey, he's brave. You know, he's, he's pushing it through there. The cows are pretty similar on speed, but he seemed to have a lot more downfalls than what I had, and a lot more skill. And I caught him in a quite tricky moment. I was like, do I go around the outside? Try and overtake him? I was like, yeah. And I looked at the way that he was placing the car. I was like, he hasn't seen me. So I backed out of it. I didn't know he was there. He's got enough experience. He knew that I hadn't seen him. And then towed up down the straight into slow. And then he did me on the brakes at the end of the back straight. And I'm sure he was looking at me going, oh, shit. I was a bit quicker then, so I hung on to him for a few more corners from then on, and then he was gone again. But his car just looked like it was sucked to the floor. I, I don't try and do what he's doing. You're not in the same league as him. Just keep on doing what you're doing. You haven't crashed it. You're doing something right. If I'd have pushed beyond that, we'd have been digging around the gravel. Jensen takes the chequered flag. But Guy has impressed everyone. For a first go, and in front of all these people, he did really well. He was sensible, he built up the speed, he looked good out on track. Excellent in a word. A perfect way to end everything that we've done with Guy over these past few months. I hope he enjoyed it, I hope he learnt a lot. I'll go to sleep tonight happy that I couldn't have done any more. But I'm a bloody racer and I'm always thinking, right, shoulda, woulda, coulda. I know what he's like and he will want to do so much more to perfect his driving skill. So I can pick bits out of this that's going to make me a better driver. But I think for me to be any good as a single-seater driver, Cheers, mate. I need to spend more time in it. That was that, All mate. right, mate. All right, mate. You were quick in the high-speed corners. For someone that doesn't race in a racing car. <laughs> I was so nervous with everything. I didn't want to over-rev it. I didn't want to crash it. I didn't want to what or not. Do it again sometime with something else. Cheers, mate. Thank you. It was just a mate. It was a foot. Yeah. Get a chance to put Silverstone GP circuit on the British Grand Prix driving with FWO. What a great experience. Guy Martin is about to experience the Belgian Grand Prix as a member of the Williams pit crew. First corner crashes are common, and an immediate pit stop for repairs could be necessary. So the rush is on to get ready before the start. A specific seat is allocated for each team member to make sure they run out in the right order. Cheers, Mike. That's pointy. Okay. Helmet, check, gloves, check. Yes. No. Yes. yes. Tissue? Yes. No. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Okay. Second. You okay? No worries. You all cool. Thank you, boss. And five. Lights out, away we go. The engineers study 1,500 channels of data transmitted from each car, while the mechanics concentrate on the big screens. They could be called into action at any moment. OK, guys, that five radio check, hands up. Great. 17 minutes into the race, the team goes to Amber Alert. And guys, stand by, please, stand by. 
guy prepares to unplug the blanket around the softer option tyre on the top rack. After more than 100 practice pit stops, where nothing has gone wrong, he's now poised to do it for real. After an agonising two and a half minutes... Guys, you can start down now. Thank you. The engineers decide not to stop Lance Stroll after all. But 35 seconds later, it all changes. Stand by Lance, stand by Lance. And then at the last minute, as a tactical response to their rivals, the Williams strategists decide to use the harder prime tyres kept on the bottom rack. The tyre carriers still aren't in position by the time the car arrives. Training, Guy was told anything longer than 2.5 seconds will be bad. Nice work, mate. This stop took 4.5 seconds. Welcome back. Sorry, mate. Don't worry about it. You did a good job. We might have lost a couple of seconds, but it's better than having the wrong set on. Okay, okay. So, it's a good stop, other than that. <laughs> There's little time to recover. Stand by, CP. Stand by, CP. This will be a prime tyre this time. Two and a half minutes later, it's time to pit Felipe Massa's car. Hey, Felipe, box this lap, box this lap. This time it was a 2.5 second stop, even though Massa parked slightly past the optimal mark. Well done, Matt. Cheers, mate. That second one was okay, I felt okay there. Cheers, go. Thanks, mate. Two and a half seconds, perfect. Okay. okay. <laughs> Pressure's on, eh? Fuck uh, you there, mate. Is that good or bad? He's fast? dirty! <laughs> <laughs> he stopped a little bit long, but yeah, that no, was good. Happy with that. Out on track, Lewis Hamilton is defending his lead from Sebastian Vettel, and both the Williams cars are making up places. With the Palmer. At this stage, the strategists think one pit stop per car will be sufficient, and so at 2.30 p.m., lunch is served. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Them two are going to take each other out. Have you ever raced round there? Yeah, best track I've ever ridden. Is it really? Yeah, it's brilliant. Then the track scenario drastically changes when the two Force India cars collide. Oh, 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 oh! They had told you! So one lost his front wing and one got a puncture. I knew that was gonna happen. That incident breaks out the safety car, slowing the field down while debris is cleared away. Just stand by, guys, stand by, please. With everyone now travelling more slowly, the team can stop for fresh ultra-soft tyres with little penalty. And so, 57 minutes into the race, the strategy changes once again. Box, we're going to box this lap. Both cars will now pit one after the other in the most pressurised scenario of all. Backstop, backstop. Matters lead car. Both tyres. Last second car. 20 seconds, Felipe, 20 seconds, Felipe. This is backstop, backstop. Who's fast? Massa! Massa! It's as hectic as pit stops get. Steady away, boy. Next one, boy. 2.6 seconds, the fastest of any team in this round of pit stops. 3.1 seconds. Yeah, the nuts were really tight. Generally on the second one, they get a bit tight. The stack stop has been executed correctly, and both cars return to the track without losing any places. Really good. That's hard to do well, and he did it really well. Listen to the radio, make sure you got the right tyre, get it out there, he did it all perfectly. So he handled that really well. Lance Stroll is up to 11th. Felipe Massa 
has made up more places than any other driver and is now in the points in eighth. The Williams mechanics know it's been a good racing day. <laughs> and with just a couple of laps left, the pressure eases. <laughs> <laughs> it's victory for Mercedes. Hamilton wins the Belgian Grand Prix in style. But there's still a feeling of satisfaction in the Williams garage. Thank you, boys. Great match today. Thank you. Well done, mate. Thank Good you. Well done, mate. Thank you. Good job, mate. Thank you. Super, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Here's Cocker. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did, mate. Thank you. Thanks very much. The lad did well. You know, I was happy. I was watching him. For the first one, I was uh, slightly puckered up, but uh, <laughs> then the rest of the stops, they went all right. Yeah, we'll have some of that, boy. We'll take that away. Thanks, mate. Thanks, nice mate. Nice <laughs> Thank you. Nice job, mate. Nice job. There it is. Eight. That'll do, won't it? <laughs> We got eight. Nice work, yeah, nice work. Yeah, I did genuinely think, yeah, it's been all right for a bit of TV, but come the 11th hour, they'll, on your bike, dickhead, we'll get, we'll get Andy in to do his job as he should, he should have been doing. Thanks for your help. Thank you for your help. Well, they didn't let me do it. They've been letting me screw away at the car, and yeah, yeah it's been, been bloody amazing, yeah. That was not an easy race, but yeah. wise you did well. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Thank you. Right, I'll go find the loop. I'll go find the loop. I had a little panic because I got out there quite soon, obviously because I don't have to bring the wheels, and I'm looking, where is he? When I looked around, the other three guys weren't there, so it's like, yeah, not a problem. And then they all came out at the same time, so I was like, please don't, please don't mess up. But well, nah, he did good, he did good. I think it was absolutely brilliant. It was an experiment to see if we could get a fit young man not only to take part in a Formula One pit stop, but to integrate himself and become one of the boys. And to be honest with you, it's one of the things that I'm, I'm more impressed and more pleased with. You know what I mean? He's just a, he's a smashing lad, and he's just come and, and got on with a job and you know become our mate in the process. An amazing sport. From the outside looking in, them boys are all swanning about. No, 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 no. When you're in the thick of it, I've been in the thick of it. It's bloody hard work, I'll tell you. I've got to go back, yeah. Let me get cracking. Come on. All right, I'll see you later. You hang in the back, I need to get out of back on. After the race, the teams start work all over again. Packing up takes six hours. The whole paddock has to drive to Italy, ready for next weekend's Grand Prix. Hey, honestly, boy, hell of an experience. Thank you, mate. Hell of an experience. We needed it, didn't we, really? Good job <laughs> you turned up. <laughs> Guy's final responsibility is to sign a confidentiality agreement. Right, so go on, what date? It is the 27th. You don't want me to read all that, do you? I should say I'm not going to squeal about anything I've seen. That one there will do, won't it? Yeah. Go on. All right. Perfect. Would I do it again? Yeah, I'd love to do it again. Love to do it again. Loved it.